Hey everyone, and welcome to Sketching with Sarah. And in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing my week two of Mermay 2020. If you haven't seen my video where I shared my week one of Mermay, check out the link in my description or in the card at the end of this video to watch that one after this one. Today, I'll be sharing my process for each Mermay day in week two, and what was going through my brain while coming up with the ideas for it. Stick around to the end of this video where I will be giving some really exciting updates on me and my bigger project that I'm working on. Mermaid Day 8's prompt is heroic. The first thing I thought about when I heard the prompt heroic was Big Hero 6. And then I immediately thought about Baymax and I thought it would be really funny to make a mermaid Baymax. Baymax is such a lovable character so why not add a fishtail to him? I feel like his character design is just so simplistic and I really didn't want to go nuts with the details on this design so I tried to keep it very minimal to emphasize that. Day 9's mermaid prompt is best buddy. At this point, since I had so much fun creating that tranquil prompt on last week's mermaid video, I decided that for the rest of mermaid I would create a series with these characters inspired by the prompts each day. So this is a wholesome sketch of my hedgerfish and porcupuffer characters just being best buddies and posing for a picture as any best buddies would. Day 10's prompt is ashamed. This is a quick sketch of my hedgerfish and porcupuffer characters having a moment where the hedgerfish is feeling very ashamed that he accidentally popped porcupuffer's balloon. I wasn't feeling super great with this drawing here, particularly in how I drew the balloon, so I decided to use some watercolor pencil and bring some red into the balloon and into the blush marks of the hedgerfish to unify the drawing a little bit better and to make the balloon a little bit more readable. Day 11 is Outcast. I found this prompt perfect timing and I swear I didn't plan this, but since I decided to have these mermaid prompts revolve around my spiky characters, I look over to the start of the page and it's just a little squishy Baymax in the corner. So I really wanted to play off of that and show just how much of an outcast Baymax is on this page by adding my characters with that kind of side eye, ooh that's such a weirdo type look in their eyes just to emphasize that outcast feeling. Day 12 is Fury. Most of you may know that porcupines shoot their quills to predators as a defense mechanism to not be eaten, so I decided to run with that idea and have the hedgerfish join in too. I really enjoy the scrunched up face I drew on that little hedgerfish. I feel like I definitely got that furious vibe on this one. Day 13 is Alien. For this prompt, I thought it would be particularly funny to have an actual animal, a pufferfish, next to my characters and being looked at as an alien just for the irony of it. Personally, I find pufferfish very alien-like. I don't know if you've ever seen one in person or just in photos in general. They really are just very bizarre looking, and I think they could pass as aliens of the sea for sure. Day 14's mermaid prompt is adrift. Now for this prompt, I could definitely tell it was meant for a mermaid type situation since adrift means floating along on a raft or a boat or something with no motor or anything to steer it. Since my characters live underwater, I didn't want to just have them floating on driftwood or something like that. So I started playing with the idea of having them fully puffed out and floating on the surface of the water kind of like a lazy river type situation. But then I decided to take it a step or two further and just have hedgerfish drifting in a car. Not only was this way more entertaining for me to draw, but since I didn't spend a lot of time on it, I'm really, really excited to rework this one digitally and make it really something. I do want to say that in these mermaid drawings, I'm using this as an art challenge to get myself to draw every single day. So I'm really not trying to make a masterpiece every single day. I tend to put so much unnecessary pressure on myself and I end up burning out and being discouraged to keep drawing. I learned that after completing Inktober last year, keeping the pressure off and just using these prompts as a way to generate ideas worked out really well. I decided to challenge myself and create an animal hybrid that was inspired by each prompt. And I ended up coming up with a lot of really cool animal hybrids that I ended up using for some illustrations I'm really proud of today. So I'm going to be treating this mermaid the same kind of way I did in Inktober and use the prompts as a way to exercise my creativity and hopefully get some really good ideas and finalizing into more fleshed out illustrations in the future. So looking at these drawings afterwards and while editing, 
I keep seeing a lot of things I want to fix and I just have to keep reminding myself that I'm using this as an exercise just to have fun and create concepts more than anything. I will be reworking the mermaid days with these characters to create a fun series and I'm really excited about it. I'll be streaming on Twitch while working on these illustrations, so if you want to come and say hi and hang out with me, that would be so much fun. I love talking to you guys and getting to know what you're interested in and just have a nice chat. If you want to be notified when I stream, feel free to follow me on twitch.tv slash sketchingwithsarah. Since I don't have a set schedule on when I'm going to be streaming yet, the best way to find out when I'm streaming is either to follow me on Twitch itself or on my Twitter and Instagram because I do tweet out every single time before I start streaming, as well as I do include a countdown in my Instagram story so you don't miss it. I think Twitch is such a fun way to get to know the people that are watching my videos and follow my content on other social media, and it's more personal and interactive that way. I am going to still make a comprehensive start to finish video for my whole Russian nesting doll project, but I thought I'd share a sneak peek of some more progress this week. So far, I've sanded each of them down so that there's no rough spots or splintery areas. I painted the Octofin doll and I think I might go in and add even tinier details such as instead of just having the dots for the suction cups, I might actually add the little suction cup part that kind of leads up to that middle part if that makes sense. As you can see also, I started doing my first couple coats for my Bippo doll. You can't really see the sketch of it anymore in this video, but I swear I can definitely see it a little bit through the thin layers of paint. So I'm overall very very excited to get started on this one I really want to do a good job and be something I'm proud of at the end of it So I appreciate all your patience and I hope you guys are as hyped as I am So that includes week two of mermaid 2020 I have all the supplies I use in this video along with links to my social media and other videos You might like to watch next if you enjoyed this video Please make sure to leave a like and comment which one of these drawings was your favorite from this week Also, tell me why it's your favorite. I'm always interested to hear what you guys think I upload every single Friday here on YouTube, and I'm really excited for the videos I have planned for this channel in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. This is a quick sketch of my Hedrafish and Porky Pupper. Pur 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 pur. Okay.